والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Glory be to Allah who sent Ramadan as a mercy to mankind It's a purification of our soul, our heart and our mind Be here with patience for the sake of our Rahman A continuous training to strengthen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and happy Ramadan. Hello and welcome dear Huda TV viewers to our new program in Ramadan, Ramadan Changed Me. That's the focus of our program, positive change, self-development, to try to be the best that we can be. And there's no better time to try to achieve that than during the great holy month of Ramadan. We want to finish Ramadan and say, yes, Ramadan changed me. Yes, I've had a positive change. And yes, I'm getting some steps closer to being the best I can be. That's the aim of our program. And you, dear viewers, are in a very integral part of this. To participate with us, you can do a number of things. First, you can go to our website at e.holul.net, e.holol.net to exercise for yourself and do our psychological or psychiatrist uh, exercise before the show and during the 10 days of the show and then re-evaluate um, yourselves at the end of the show and you will also not only have a chance to improve on yourself and be the best that you can be but also you'll have a chance to win with us many prizes. We have total prizes uh, totaling up to 80,000 Saudi Riyals and the first prize will be 20,000 Saudi Riyals and 40 winners uh, will be with us uh, throughout this great holy month on this program. You could also win with us in another way uh, via answering our daily question which will come to you away at the end of our 30 minutes program uh, via an SMS on 002-014-327173. Again, 002 -017 That's to answer our daily question in this program via SMS. You could also join us live via phone on 002-02-38-555-248 or 249. We'll be doing all of this via discussing very interesting topics like making the intention to positive change, self-evaluation, anger control, time management, positivity, psychological clarity, and many other topics in our show with the company of our coach. Our coach is Sheikh Ramiz Ibrahim, and he's a specialist in psychotherapy and uh, self-development training and life coaching, is also a Daya Islami. Thank you, Sheikh Ramiz Ibrahim, for coaching us throughout uh, the 10 days of our program. Thank you for being here. Ahla. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam, Sheikh uh, Ramiz. Happy Ramadan to you. Thank you Sheikh. And also, we have with us in the studio some very distinguished guests who share with us the uh, great goal of trying to be the best <coughs> that we can be via self development. And they are Mr. Abdullah Adiyami, who is a manager of a private school here in Cairo. Happy Ramadan, Mr. Abdullah. Ramadan Mubarak to you as well. Also. And Mr. Amr Abdul Al, who is a student in the Faculty of Arts. Happy Ramadan, alaykum salam. And also Mr. Asher Saeed, who is a software developer. Thank you for being with us. Happy Ramadan. You too. And also Mr. Sharif Hamdi, who is a teacher of English language. Thank you, you are welcome. Mr. Sharif, and happy Ramadan to you. Happy Ramadan to you too. As you see, Coach, we have with us a very distinguished panel from teachers, from managers of private schools, from uh, uh, students in the Faculty of Arts and software developers. We want to develop ourselves. That's the main goal. And we want our viewers also to try to be the best that they can be and take uh, uh, this great opportunity in, in the great holy month of Ramadan to start doing that. Where would you put us on the track first, Coach? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Change is not easy. 
it never is easy and people are not ready really for, for the change unless they take the opportunity to look deep within themselves and they want to have that change and we mustn't forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he does not change a people's situation unless they first change from what's within themselves but you have to be ready and we don't, most of us don't really know ourselves our deeper, our deeper selves we all wear masks our heart is layered by years of abuse and abandonment and I say abandonment because many of us don't really think about our heart we say dhikrullah la tansa dhikrullah don't forget the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the heart sometimes is very hard uh, literally hard and it's very difficult to, have to make that change the question sometimes I ask uh, the students is uh, or when I coach them is what does your heart need right now? What is it, if your heart could speak, what would it say to you? Would it say to you, oh you've abandoned me? You've neglected me? You know, I, 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 want, I, I need this or I need that. Maybe I need love, maybe I need attention. Maybe I need security, maybe I need variety. Maybe, we don't know we, unless we ask. And everyone really knows themselves. Behind the mask that they show everybody else, they know themselves deep down. And majority of people uh, find it very difficult to change because they don't really want change, they have a comfort zone and this comfort zone can be very dangerous somebody can come to you and see you on the surface and see who you, they, what they see on the surface and they say, brother or sister, this, I see this and it's wrong and they may take offence sometimes people that take offence know they have that disease know they have that need for change but because it's put it right into their face they find it difficult to say Yes, you're right. I, I need that change right now. So how dangerous is that comfort zone indeed? And, and is the problem that many people do not even realize that they need to change? That's right, they don't realize. Hmm. And, mm -hmm. and, and why, why would that be? Although it, it is very logical that um, even the best in their fields, whether in, in, in economics and politics, sports, um, you're always in a competition against yourself. You, always, you can always improve. There's always room for improvement. And that who thinks that he's reached the top will always fall. Um, and, and in fact will be ignorant and, and, and not a, uh, a real uh, knowledgeable person. So, so why do we, uh, most of us, neglect that there is a, a need to improve ourselves. Okay. Why is that? Why are we blind? If we, if we look back and look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how He created us and inspired the soul to know right from wrong. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that um, every child is born on fitrah and the parents make him a Christian or a Jew or, or Magian, a fire worshipper. And have you seen a, a newborn calf or newborn animal? It's not... Um, uh, it's not uh, maimed in any way. So when a child is born, if, it's, if the child is kept and nurtured with the tenets of Islam, the purity of Islam, to change gradually through the time, like, uh, and uh, uh, every parent should have a, be a murabbi, a life coach, to bring that child to a certain level, a certain age of tarbiyah, they will have not, ma not many problems. But what happens is our fitrah becomes tainted by society. We're made to think success is in the form of materialism, mm. in the form of getting that gold medal. Mm. This is why you'll find sometimes people who are competitive in sports, they, you see them, they miss the goal, they're ready to commit suicide. I find that very uh, ajib, I find it very uh, uh, weird in fact. Mm. They miss the goal, they didn't make that jump properly, they didn't throw the javelin properly, and it's like the end of the world. Because they have been brainwashed, and they've brainwashed themselves to think that success is in what they're actually doing in the dunya. Mm -hmm. So you're saying this success can be in, in very different fields, and, and uh, not just By a material degree. one, or, or, your, or your own profession, uh, on, on, on improving your character, improving your relationship with Allah, your relationship with your family, your relationship with your... and so on. N course. Not just mat material or professional success. What about... Um, um, uh, positive change in the relationship with Allah because if we tend to believe and, and see uh, in our uh, life uh, that those who are really successful are the ones who think long term um, whether in the field of investment in the field of uh, teaching uh, uh, or uh, management those who think long term are the ones who are most successful so um, what, what, what would you say about the theory that 
There is nothing that can make you think more, think more long term than to think about eternity. Your final destination is going to be either be Eden or hell. So if you really want to think big and think long term, you think about your relationship with Allah, you think about the role of your religion in your life. And this, that could be the, the best incentive for change, of course. positive change. But this is only for those who have Iman. It's not for everybody. And we know Iman is by degrees. And a person that realizes that the most severe punishment meted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a believer isn't that he may take away your eyes or he may take away the life of someone that you love, your, your parents or your children. But he puts a hijab, he puts a barrier between himself and you. For a true believer, that is a punishment. That you're trying to get too close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah's put a barrier there. Maybe it's a test for you. Maybe to make you stronger to overcome that barrier. Some people fall short. Again, this falling short is to do the way they've been brought up. Give up. But the, iman, the more iman they have, the giving up factor is lessened. Mm. The less iman they have, they try to find immediate gratification for that need. Mm. And it could be haram, it could be halal. Mm. But depending on the iman of the person. And yes, of course, for a true believer, success is in pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and eventually ending in paradise. That, that is the greatest success. So, in your, in your opinion, uh, Sheikh Ramaz, what's the bigger, biggest obstacle to positive change? I know if it's I such speak a broad... about it in generic terms, right. it would be self-belief, the negative belief, limiting belief they have about themselves that they mm. can't achieve. Mm. Because they've been brought up to think that they're useless. Mm. By the time a child is in their teens, especially in London where I'm from, they, there's an amazing change. When I say amazing, not in a positive change, but a complete negative change. I've had parents crying to me saying, what's happened to my, um, um, my sweet princess? She turned 13 and she's like sh- you know, shaitan on, on, on the earth. And you think, subhanAllah, yesterday the father said she was so sweet and now she's turned into societal. And we cannot uh, detract that parents do try and do a good job. But just because we have children... If we haven't had the training, doesn't make us good parents in regards to tarbiyah. So uh, self-belief is, is, is the starting point. Belief in that what you're, what you're striving for, you deserve. Most people, they plan. If not plan, they dream. So they plan, put it into action. Either they stop very quickly, or just before they reach the end, they sabotage it. Believing they're not worthy of that. I have no value to this. I've been taught generally speaking, I've been taught that what I want to achieve is not for me. And parents, as children are growing up, by saying to the child, you can't, I don't mean you can't because you're not allowed by the authority, that's different, I'm talking about you can't do, that's not for you son. I want you to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer, but he wants to do something else, maybe he wants to be an alim. That, that's, that's, that's frowned upon these days, especially in London, the, the parents, you have the fathers and mothers who are practicing properly, but they want to have a placard on the wood, say look what my child has achieved, for me in the dunya, not for themselves. So, so what, they, what's the difference between a plan and a dream? So we want to develop ourselves, we should have a plan, and this, maybe we are dreaming. You, you mentioned two very interesting uh, points. And, and definitely there is, what, what, what's the major difference between the two? And this is between, between black and white, between East and West. A person who does not want change, you know that person. Everyone knows that, everyone knows that person. Let's call that person X. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Two, three years later, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Five years later, this is the dreamer. Mm. And unless you, you have some kind of love for this ex-person, and you tell them straight, brother, so you're dreaming. Mm. You need to wake up from this dream and stop living in the future, imagining yourself who you want to be, and stop living in the past and remembering those good times, and stay in the present now, and start planning for that action that you've, you've planned. But, 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 but there's always a limit, for instance, for, for, self-deve- uh, for self-development, isn't it? Because I can't say, for instance... I want to be the fastest man on earth. I want to break the 100 meters no record. No problem. I'm, I'm, I'm close to 40 years old. It's going to be very hard well, for yeah. me well, to... So, dream, the pl- right. Okay, we've, we'll talk about dreams with the okay. dreamer. We know the dreamer, right? right? Just talk, 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 talk. And it's sometimes to hear it from the same person nearly all the time gets very boring. And if you love that person, you will tell them straight. Right. Now, let's talk about the, pl- the person who plans their goals. Okay. I, I wanted to say that the change ha- has to be realistic as well, right? That's what I'm coming to. You were talking about you're in, in your 40s and you would do a 100 meter right. dash and right. 11. I'm going to break. I believe you can. I'm a coach. I believe you can. But we have to look at the practical factors. Your age, weight, 
health, etc. Now, you can achieve the 100 meter dash, for example, let's talk about this, 100 meter dash, at the best that a 40 year old can do it. Indeed. 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 Maybe it's right. 12, 13 seconds, 15 right. seconds, say. Right. The other runners will, will laugh at you and say, 15 seconds, I did it in 9, yeah, but I'm right. 14, you're 20. Right. But I can do it at this age. So you can be the best in something, or the best in your category. In least. your category. Right. In your, but it all starts from, and I'd like to reiterate the point, and I'll be reiterating the point all throughout the episodes, is you have to start learning about yourself. Who are you? Learning about yourself. That will be our introduction to the second part yes. uh, of, uh, of the program uh, here uh, tonight. The first episode of Ramadan Changed Me. Dear viewers, we have to take a very short break. When we come back with Sheikh Rams Ibrahim, uh, we'll be uh, tackling uh, very uh, interesting points on uh, self-development and how to teach yourself and also get uh, the view of our dear guests here uh, in the studio, Mr. Abdullah, Mr. Amr, Mr. Asher and Mr. Sharif. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a very short while. With patience for the sake of our Rahman. A continuous training to strengthen our Iman. In the name of Allah, Muslims will be fasting all over the planet Earth. In China, in Russia, in Southeast Asia, in Africa, in America, in Europe, in the Middle East, in all parts of the planet, all nations, all races, all people will be fasting in this blessed month. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. And tajweed is a science that you cannot learn it on your own. Ask it as a program which aims to answer your questions about your deen, your faith, your way of life. This course is Islam. This is a totally different price, but I divided the payment over this period of time. And the seller is the person or the firm which owns the, the item which you're buying in this condition. This form of business transaction is love. Be here with patience for the sake of our Rahman. Welcome back, dear Huda TV viewers, to the second part of the first episode, the first of our ten episodes of our new program here, Ramadan Changed Me. And uh, when uh, we, uh, be just before the break, uh, Sheikh Ramiz Ibrahim, our life coach, our uh, psychotherapy and self-development uh, trainer, was talking about the very important uh, uh, factor of knowing yourself, how to know uh, yourself. And before I give the, the ball to you, uh, coach, I just want to say to our dear um, uh, friends here in the studio, Abdullah, Amr, uh, Rashid, and uh, Sharif, it's true you're going to be with us through, th th through the entirety of our, our 10 days, inshallah. Mm -hmm. But we want to get your voices heard also from now. So don't save it for the second or third or ninth mm -hmm. episodes. We want your voices you heard from now. You will hear our voice tonight. Okay. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Coach, Know yes. yourself. Knowing, knowing yourself. Knowing yourself. Just a, just a, a, a couple of things. Uh, majority of people think they know themselves. But if we, if we went through some of the uh, exercises that I teach, you would know that majority of people uh, know others better than they know themselves. And others know you better than know your own self. And this is a problem. This is a problem. And the problem stems from the fact that, for example, you'd go and you meet someone for the first time, you shake their hands, you ask their name, they give you their name, you give them your name, you walk away, and you, what, do you, what happens? You forget you their forget. name. Because you're too busy imposing your ego, your nafs on them. You want to have the stage. It's about putting yourself aside. Who are you? I'm insignificant. Make someone, else in, make someone significant in front of you, and you'll be significant. In regards to, not as in uh, being proud or, or being better than anybody else, but to know yourself. So, yes, I actually put that person before I put myself. And this is where the first development starts from knowing yourself. is to put others before yourself. That way you'll know yourself. You'll know if you're selfish, you'll know that if you're selfless. 
and it's very, very important for uh, the two uh, main needs of a human being, contribution and growth. And I'd just like to ask a question. Uh, we were speaking earlier about dreaming and planning. We have to ask a very important question to ourselves, literally to ourselves. Am I a planner and, or am I a dreamer? And to open the floor for discussion, I'd like to ask Brother Sharif about uh, what your long-term or short-term goals are. Yeah, uh, as for my, my long-term uh, goals and short-term goals, before I talk about this, uh, I have to give you... Um, background about my, my career history first to understand it. Uh, I was graduated from the Faculty of Commerce, uh, it was eight years ago. Okay, since then and for five years after that, uh, I worked very hard to collect money and, uh, and by the way, I, I got two jobs. In the morning I was, uh, I was an accountant in the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the afternoon, I was an English teacher. And I'm still an English teacher. But sure. during the five years, I, uh, all what I cared about is to collect money, uh, to build a house, uh, t to get married. Uh, that's, that's, what, that's all what I cared about. But after that, I asked myself a question. So, what's going to happen at the end? You are, got, you are collecting money and that's all. So, what's the end of all that? I really... So that was your hierarchy of value. Yeah, that's yeah. What you, that's I, what you spent time on, trying yeah. to, 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 to cover money. Yeah. But, as importance. But later, I wanted to promote my values. Good. Uh, I was um, uh, good at English. Uh, this qualified me to be a, an English teacher. But at the same time, after the five or six years, I started to think about the hereafter. The hereafter, I have, I have to do something for the hereafter. Um, as long as we are talking about the, the long-term goals, so the matter here is very l related to the hereafter. Everyone is going to die. And that's what I, what, what I uh, thought about. So I thought about how to serve the religion, the Islamic religion, through English language that I... What, that I'm fond of, that I was fond of. How to do this? We hope you're doing this yeah, right now. Alhamdulillah. And achieving one of your yeah. dreams. Uh, and for, for two or three years, I started to, uh, to, to find out if there is a, an institute or a faculty that teaches Islamic studies. Uh, therefore, I will help other people to know about Islam, especially the, the people in the Western world. And Alhamdulillah, uh, there is a professor, a, uh, a great professor in the, facu in, in the uh, uh, faculty of uh, translation and languages in the uh, Azhar University. His name is Dr. Muhammad Abu Layla, and he established an institute. Because uh, when I went to the, to the, to the uh, University of Azhar, they rejected me because I wasn't an Azhari student. You know that. But it was the system there. But alhamdulillah, I joined the institute and uh, uh, I finished the first year, and I, alhamdulillah, I got the, inc uh, the excellent degree. And I hope, inshallah, uh, during the next year, the next year is the last one, by, by the way, and I hope, uh, inshallah, uh, I'll get the same degree inshallah. and serve my religion. Inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, about the most important point here, that is uh, uh, to study and to be a scholar, you have to get time enough time to study and, uh, uh, and to, to go on. Uh, that's why I decided to give up the job that I had in the, in the uh, Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, all, uh, most of, our, uh, most of, uh, of my, uh, uh, my, my family or m my relatives and uh, friends, they discouraged me to do this. They said, don't do this. Right. But yes. alhamdulillah, I, I finally, uh, I, quit, I quit, I gave up this job, and I'm happy to do this, alhamdulillah. We're, we're very happy for and you And this is well, a very Sarif. important point about brother speaking about. Here, there's so many uh, developmental uh, aspects here of your life. Yeah. You knew that you had to make a change. Yeah, I had to do and that. And the change that made, the, the thing that made you want that change is you thought about the akhirah. Mm. So yeah, you changed your mindset now. Your mm. mindset changed. Yeah. So all of this included time management. Uh, knowing uh, that 
as in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that if you leave something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala, Allah will Allah compensate will him. him. Yeah, this is exactly what happened. And this yeah. is subhanallah. This is a a, a, a real thing, uh, aspect of an anecdote of someone's life in al- regards al- to al- all of the. Al- alhamdulillah, and 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 we wanna um, uh, congratulate you on uh, on this, uh, Sharif. Thank you. We because we only have five about five minutes left, uh, Sheikh Rams and dear viewers. We wanna also get the the views uh, on the question posed by uh, Sheikh uh, Rams uh, uh, Ibrahim. What are your short-term and, and long-term goals, uh, Aisha? Uh, well, my short-term goals is to be a better Muslim this Ramadan than last Ramadan. And my goal for this Ramadan is to develop myself so that next Ramadan <coughs> I will be a better Muslim than this Ramadan. Uh, my short-term goal is during this month is to take advantage of the fact that the shayateen are locked away which gives me some more time and space to assess myself and uh, not to be attracted to all of the haram that goes on in society. Um, my short-term goal for this Ramadan is to see which faults I have acquired since last Ramadan, because sometimes you may acquire new faults that you didn't realize you acquired. I guess by the time we end the program, uh, uh, 10 days from now, inshallah, Sheikh uh, Ramaz Ibrahim will have put uh, his, uh, his hands on uh, on some of uh, of those and try, so you're in the right place here. Inshallah. We want to also get uh, the, the view of uh, Mr. Abdullah. Yeah. Um, uh, my short term goals is to um, first of all seek knowledge uh, and try to look at what this knowledge is doing for me at the moment. You know, our predecessors they used to seek knowledge in a different way that that we did. They used to take it very slowly and act upon it. And I'm kind of like going through this now in my life. I think that knowledge. Is something that I need to take and change uh, with this knowledge is what I'm going to start looking to do. You know, as I'm achieving it, you know, try to make changes from Qu- there on. Qu- quite a noble goal, uh, I believe, uh, Coach. And and uh, finally, uh, Amr? Yeah, as for me, uh, I'm a student now. So my short-term goals is to uh, get my degree with high marks, uh, which makes it uh, uh, be easy to, to find my beloved job in the future uh, and uh, also uh, be a good person or a better person in this Ramadan is another short term goal because Ramadan is only 13 days 30 days you know 30 days is, is only a beginning Ramadan is only 30 days and our episode is only 30 minutes so un- unfortunately okay. uh, we'll have oh. to close it out here but we'll be back in the, in the upcoming days uh, with a psychotherapy specialist and uh, life, coach, uh, life coach and self-development uh, trainer specialist Sheikh uh, Ramiz Ibrahim and with our dear uh, um, uh, guests here in the studio uh, Abdullah Adiyami and uh, uh, Amr uh, Abdelal and also uh, Aishir Saeed and Sharif Hamdi Dear viewers, we want to tell you about the the uh, the question the daily question in uh, our program R- Ramadan change me and today's question is when did fasting Ramadan become an obligatory act of worship for Muslims again when fasting Ramadan became an obligatory act of worship for Muslims and you have three choices the second year of Hijrah the third year of Hijrah or the fourth year of Hijrah you could answer us uh, via SMS on 002-014-3271-771. So it's 002-014-3271-771. And that's today's question, and we'll be announcing uh, the winner uh, tomorrow, inshallah, uh, uh, at 10 p.m. here in Cairo, uh, the, the start of our second episode of Ramadan changed me, inshallah. We wish you, dear viewers, all the best until we meet again. On behalf of you, we thank very much, uh, Sheikh Ramiz uh, Ibrahim, and waiting for um, uh, the uh, co- coaching and um, instructions for self-development in the upcoming episode, Sheikh uh, Ramiz. And we thank you, uh, Abdullah, Amr, Aishar, and Sharif. And we thank you, dear viewers. Until we meet again on Ramadan Change Me, this is Muhammad Abdurrahim. Happy Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>
Glory be to Allah who sent Ramadan as a mercy to mankind. It's a purification of our soul, our heart and our mind. Bear with patience for the sake of our Rahman. A continuous training to strengthen our Iman.